There's many theories about the Mark of the Beast. Some people believe that it could be some sort of a uh, logo of a popular brand. Some people think it's a chip in the hand or the forehead. Still others believe that it could be some sort of a uh, barcode. And of course, there's the popular theory that the Mark of the Beast is 666. Last night we discovered that 666 was not the Mark of the Beast. Okay, he's correct in a way. Let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna let you know for certain what the mark of the beast is today as it is identified in the Bible. Revelation 13 and 18. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 603 score and 6. It may equate to 666 as the mark of the beast actually equates to 6 plus 6 plus 6 in numerology which is the number nine. Here's a little something you can ponder in your mind. Something that has never been explored along these lines. Paint a mental picture of the guns you can find. And I'll show you why we so fascinated with the nine. Mm. The reason that we like it doesn't lie in the design. The secret of our adoration lies behind the nine, the number. It has a special meaning that's divine. A spiritual significance that needs to be defined. Man's relationship with the number nine is all. It has its beginnings and its origins in God. Here is an example that I'm giving to you first. Consider there are nine planets in the universe. Mercury, Venus, Earth, then the Mars. Plus the other five planets rest among the stars. They're all heavenly bodies. But herein lies the wisdom. Consider that your heavenly body has nine systems. Mm. A planet for each system. Mm. A system for each planet. Mm. This seems to be a symbolism that we take for granted. Mm -hmm. Circulatory, reproductive, skeletal, and nervous. Muscular and endocrine to others. Go research it. And then just prepare. The universe is 999 times 999 times squared. Mm -hmm. There's a little science from the time dropped right from the mind of the sign. Number nine. Nine represents birth, completion. That's, That's right. all. Take notice how the ninth month is the start of fall. Mm. It's the third out of four seasons, so peep what you find that the three for the season is the square root of nine. Uh -huh. Bullets from the nine millimeters keep on gunning. Uh -huh. My mother Ty said that nine is the number of the woman. So look closely at the word feminine and you will find if you break it down right that it's really fem in nine. The woman in nine. And that's just a segment. Because a nine looks like the bottom half of a woman when she's pregnant. Ooh. So peep how it takes a nine months to have a baby. Approximately 270 days she carries her seed. And that math is divine. Because the two plus the seven plus the zero equals nine. A man, when he marries a woman, the band is placed on a woman's ninth finger on her hand. Surprising? Here is something a little more enticing. Retailers use a nine in marketing and advertising. Pricing, a car is $20,099. Gum is 79. Candy is 99 cents. A gallon of gas, $3.99. They do this because they know the attractiveness behind nine. It always multiplies back to nine. Use any number with a nine, you can find this is true. Nine times two is 18. And one plus the eight equals nine. Know what I mean? Nine times eight. See, that's 72. The seven plus the two is nine. This you can do. With one, two, three, four, five, six, or seven, even nine times nine, ten, or eleven, wow. 360 degrees, you will find that the three plus the six plus the zero equals nine. The number nine is very important because according to Revelation 13 and 18, it is the number of, the mark of the beast is the number of a man, okay? And I've deduced that that number is the number nine. Now, when you think of a man, like I explained to you in previous posts, a man is a species which was made by us. In other words, the pre-Adamites made man. There's another name for pre-Adamites. That other name is the sons of God. But the sons of God made man, and the beast, which when you look up the definition of human in the Valentine's Law Dictionary, 1930 edition, you'll find that a human being is defined as being a monster. Okay, so God made man through us, and the beast is basically a monster. So the human can be equated with the beast here. We're not talking about an entity that most people think that we're talking about when, when we're talking about this beast. Remember, Revelation 13 and 18 says, here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is 
the number of a man. And his number is, let's talk about the man's number is, 600, 3 score, and 6. And that's actually 666. Well, people just say 666. Six, six. Either way, 666 or 666 six, six, broken down to one digit in numerology equals nine. So this man that is acting as a beast has a number and that number is a nine digit number. Okay? It's a nine digit number. Now, when you think of every man, which is a species, that has a nine digit number, the number that you think of is a social security number or something similar to that that they have in other countries. But we're basically talking about the social security number because in Revelation 13 and 17 it says, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So the man that has this nine digit number, aka social security number, is not really looked upon as being a man at all. He's looked upon as being a person. And a person is a person, a place, or a thing. And this thing that this man is looked upon as being is a monster. That's why the name human being or the term human being is defined as being a monster in Black's Law Dictionary. So this man whom is looked upon as being a beast because he's a person, which is a thing, he's not being looked upon as being a sentient being like he was created by God. He's been turned into this other thing that's really a beast. And this other thing that is the beast is the person that has this nine digit number referred to as a social security number. Now remember, you can't buy a sale unless you have the mark. Right now today, you can't buy a sale unless you have a social security number. You want to sell something. I'm talking about in the public. In the private, you can do what you want to do. In the public, you can't buy a sale unless you got a social security number. So your credit card is directly tied to your social security number. What else can be grabbed out of my wallet? Edgar Matthews was trying to use his debit card to pay for groceries at Safeway, but that never happened. I hadn't tapped it, I hadn't inserted it, I hadn't swiped it, and then all of a sudden, out comes the receipt, and I said, how did this get paid for? The cashier couldn't explain it. She stood there literally just sort of blank. I really thought that the guy ahead of me, that he had been charged. I said, somebody paid for this on a credit card somewhere. Turns out the tap to pay card reader at Safeway had ignored the debit card in Edgar's hand. Instead, it reached into Edgar's back pocket, threw his wallet and charged his Bank of America credit card tucked inside. That's a pretty big reach. I mean, around me or through me to my wallet. Why didn't it grab the card that was near it? How did it decide what to grab? I was shocked. I was like, well, it can't be. Sonia Cesari says it happened at a doctor's office. I went to pay and they said, you're already paid. And I said, I haven't inserted my card. I haven't even taken it out of my wallet. Turns out the card reader there had sent radio waves into her purse and charged her credit card without her knowing it. And that wasn't all. Three days later at a boutique in Yauntville. Sonia got an even bigger surprise at a little shop. The woman said, oh my, it's just read three cards. The store's tap to pay system charged not only one, but three credit cards tucked in a wallet inside her purse. I'd say I was two feet away at that point, for sure. All charges were reversed, but it was troubling. It Could it inadvertently be happening everywhere, multiple times a day? And it makes you very uncomfortable and frightened. I mean, somebody's literally in your pocket, which is uh, very alarming. So I was swiping through, I was looking for the tip at the end. Ace Vatican was about to pay for lunch at a restaurant. A portable pay terminal charged his card before he could swipe or tap. It is kind of scary in a way that that can happen. He saw my story about Destiny M, whose card was charged at Safeway without her knowing it. It's like, oh, wait a minute, this, I think something like this happened to me too. You know, y'all did a little story on it. I said, oh my God, that happened to me. The industry party line here is this is not supposed to be happening. Ted Rossman of Bankrate.com says, theoretically, this can't happen. You're not supposed to have a card charged by mistake. You're supposed to have to hold it very close to the reader. The industry standard is generally 
one or two inches. Technology exists to read radio frequencies at long range, but supposedly not on credit cards. No comfort for these folks. Your mortgage payment is associated with your social security number. Your insurance, auto insurance, is directly associated with your social security number. So in the public, you cannot buy or sell unless you have this mark. And the name that's associated with that mark, that name is an all capital letter name, which indicates in and of itself a dead person. Because when you go to the cemetery and you look in the cemetery at all of the tombstones in the cemetery, you'll find that all of the names written on these tombstones is written in all capital letters. So if you're walking around, but nevertheless you're considered dead, you must be a beast. All right, for clarity, let's take a look at the definition of beast in the Black's Law Dictionary. It says, an animal, a domestic animal, a quadruped, such as may be used for food or in labor or for sports, okay? First it says, an animal, which is a beast. Now, this particular human that I'm referring to, or this man that's a beast, sometimes grows a tail, a little six-inch tail, that if they can, they'll snip it off at birth, all right? Then, a domestic animal. That's one that, you know, you keep in the house, and he stays in the house, and sleeps, and plays, and eats with you, and everything else. Then it's quadruple, okay? Such as may be used for food or in labor. So this beast that I'm referring to is used in labor, which is the whole purpose of the social security number, so you can get a job, so forth and so on. That's the mark of this beast, okay? So you might be thinking right now that this, uh, you know, I'm stretching things. This quadruple thing is uh, it's got to be referring to a four-legged animal. Okay, well let's take a look at the definition of a quadruped human, right? This is from the Oxford Languages Dictionary. A quadruped human. Quadrupalism is sometimes referred to as being on all fours and is observed in crawling, especially by infants. In the 20th century, quadruple movement was popularized as a form of physical exercise by George Herbert Kenich Ito as a Japanese man famous for speed running on all four limbs. So now, to clarify what this beast is, this beast is an animal-like thing that's used for labor, and the mark of this beast is that nine-digit number referred to as a social security number or whatever type of tracking number that they use in other countries. But typically, it's a nine-digit number, which is referred to uh, in the Bible as the mark of the beast, as I've shown you, the three sixes or 600, three score, three score is 60, and six. That's six, six, six. Together is 18, broken down to one number is nine. So that's the mark of the beast. Remember, you won't be able to buy or sell unless you got that mark of the beast. Some of y'all that don't believe in God and don't believe in the Bible because you've been lied to so much by these false prophets and false teachers out here to where when you hear the truth, the truth sounds like a lie. So so most of you, especially the Christian generation, just sum, summarize everything as being a lie and you don't want to believe in it, so forth and so on. I can understand that. Although, now's the time to Challenge yourself and ask yourself the stuff that you have heard concerning the, the Bible from these false prophets. Did it make any sense? And I'm sure you find the answer that negative and that it didn't make sense to you. You've heard the mark of the beast explained by people. It's going to be a mark that's in your forehead and in your right hand. You read the Bible even, but because you don't have understanding, then you misunderstood what was written by that that was in the Bible. Revelations chapter 13, verse 16. And he called us all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. Okay, this mark being spoken of here that's in your right hand is simply saying that you're making your mark or this beast that has this number, this nine-digit number, is making this mark with his right hand. He's writing his social security number, this nine-digit number, with his right hand. It's that simple. And that means that mark is in your right hand. And when you talk about it's in your right hand or in their foreheads, it's, this number's in your head. Everybody memorizes their social security number. Everybody remembers their social security number, so that number is in your head. 
is in your forehead. It's not some mark that's put on the outside of your head like some people talk about. That's what they do on Ash Wednesday when they put this cross on your forehead with ashes. That's supposed to be the mark of the beast even though it's coming from the Catholic Church. These are just a bunch of false prophets just like the ones in the, in the Baptist Church and the Protestant Church and all the rest of them. A bunch of false prophets. Your false prophets have misled you and taught you wrong when it comes to just about everything in the Bible. I'm straightening out the record. Nevertheless, you've been going to these false prophets, supporting them with your dollars, with your so-called money, and you have misled you and taught you wrong when it comes to just about everything in the Bible. I'm straightening out the record. Nevertheless, you've been going to these false prophets, supporting them with your dollars, with your so-called money, and you have been bamboozled. You've just been lied to the entire time you've been going there. Most of you go there, uh, like the script says, because you have an itching ear. Your ear is itching. If I explain this thing in, in a manner that your pastor or your false prophet wasn't able to do, he, he, he's not able to explain it to you this way because he wasn't chosen by God and sent to you for this purpose. I was. I need your support. I need you to show God that you support God's word, the truth about God's word. Get your cash app. Make a donation to my ministry or to my channel. Be as generous as you can because when you're generous with God, God is generous with you. If my teachings make a difference, give me some feedback. Let me know how much my teachings mean to you. Thank you in advance for your generosity and until the next time, peace.